Hello fellow biologists and today we are looking at lesson objective G taken from the OCR specification for A-level biology on cloning and biotechnology. Uh, we are looking at how to culture microorganisms effectively using aseptic techniques and the importance of manipulating them in a batch and continuous fermentation. Okay so um, to culture microorganisms for use first of all we have to use a fermenter or bioreactor which is it's shown in the image in the diagram there. These are uh, sealed and sterile or aseptic units so that the product is not contaminated and microorganisms are not in competition with other microorganisms as well. Now within those biofermenters it's really important we regulate these things within there, um, the temperature and pH link into um, enzymes and uh, the manipulation of, of how they can determine enzyme action. Uh, obviously, enzymes are involved in metabolic processes such as aerobic respiration, which they do really like. Oxygen is obviously needed for aerobic respiration. Nutrients such as glucose are obviously needed for aerobic respiration. And the buildup of waste, this can uh, be detrimental to the microorganisms, so it's important that we regulate um, the, the buildup of waste as well. <clears throat> So this is um, an example of biofermenter that you need to know, and you need to know some of the different things that are involved here. So we've got the motor there at the top, which turns the paddle at the bottom. So here's the paddle here at the bottom. It's really important that the, the paddle is rotated so that it mixes the contents. So anything in a red box here is taken directly from the mark scheme. We need to be aware of that. We have a pH controller, and this uses a pH buffer. Really important, we maintain the pH without certain pH so that enzyme activity can um, maintain its optimum. We have gas coming out to prevent the buildup of any pressure because obviously microorganisms, microorganisms release uh, carbon dioxide after, in aerobic respiration. Uh, other things to be aware of here, we've got oxygen going in obviously for aerobic respiration to take place. Um, we have it surrounded like a water jacket as so you can see here that you've got what cool water going in and also water coming out the other side so this helps to maintain the temperature inside the biofermenter so that enzymes can work at the optimum temperature and aerobic respiration can be maintained at that constant optimum and uh, we obviously have a nutrient inlet as well so the nutrients need to go in in order so that the microorganisms have the nutrients available for aerobic respiration so that's the biofermenter a couple of blanks here in case you want to have a practice <clears throat> um practice printing that off maybe and practice uh, identifying the different stages so these bioreactors it's really important that, that they're aseptic um, and the reasons why and this is taken directly from the mark scheme as well we, we need it to be aseptic to avoid any unwanted microbes in there that could compete with the microorganisms we're using for nutrients it could also decrease the yield of the product if any unwanted microbes get in there we could get contamination of the product and also it could change the conditions within the fermenter. So this leads us on to batch and continuous fermentation. So batch process is where you've got the starter population and it's mixed with a specific quantity of nutrient solution and it's allowed to grow for a certain period of time. Now, normally the process is stopped before the death or decline phase, which we're going to look at very shortly in terms of the growth curve. But we want to harvest it before this, uh, as the secondary metabolites are produced. And we're going to again look at what that is very shortly. In continuous process, the microorganisms are inoculated in the sterile medium and it's added to continuously. So you add more nutrients, you add more oxygen. Um, whereas in the batch process, you don't add to it. You just keep it isolated on its own until it's, it's got to the process of uh, producing secondary metabolites. So some advantages and disadvantages of using these different processes. <clears throat> um, one thing to really highlight to you is the batch culture. Um, if it's contaminated, just that batch is lost. But if it's in continuous and you get contamination, you lose uh, volumes of products. It's quite a, a big thing in continuous if you get a contamination. So I'll leave it up there for you. Um, I'm going to stop this video in a second and we're going to continue to look at um, serial dilutions and their importance in a second. So this is part one. I'll continue with part two very shortly. Uh, guys, remember in your exam, do not use the word amount, it, they, or size. Um, well done. Good luck.